Hello beautiful people. I am back again today and I have a heart touching Sanquilla story. Apparently her grave marker came and her father was at the cemetery and you could see the hurt and pain in him and you could see that he still messed up but he wanted to do an interview for the media and I have the interview here for you guys to see. It actually brought me to tears, but I was proud because there was trust and faith in God. Here it goes, guys. Is this sort of a little emotion standing here talking about this? It's on back order, but uh, I'm Martha Kane. So I brought you all out here today to let y'all know that, you know, um, her mark is down now, you know. Um, I can come, me and my mother, my family, I can come up here and talk to her. I know where she is. Because at first, I didn't know where, I, I didn't even know she was over there. Um, I talked to her that Wednesday before she passed, transition over. I get a phone call from my mother saying that she transitioned over in Mexico. Uh, then I get a phone call, the only thing I know, she talked to Cleo Cook, supposed to be her best friend, two times on the phone. And I ain't know nothing about that. You know, I just felt as a father that um, the way I love her, the way I raised her, that I should have had an opportunity to give her that father advice or my opinion about going over there. And which I didn't. And and I know for a fact, from the bottom of my heart, we all might not even be standing out here if I had that opportunity to speak to her, even though she's 25 years old, uh, she grown, but still at the same time, I'm her protector until she get a husband. When she get a husband, then he become a protector. But as this father standing right here, I feel like I should have been her protector. And I was denied that. What would you have said? I would have asked her who she going with. How well do you know these folks? Then I would have came back and said, well, who, who their parents are? Well, before you go, let me meet these parents. Let me meet these folks. You know, I always been, I always been like that ever since. She started beginning to having a lot of friends, you know, as a father, you know. Not trying to be in her business. It's just the point of um, making sure she okay and the folks that are around her, who she keeping company with. Because everybody can say you your friend, but they're really not. It all depends on what you got and how you carry yourself. And she carried herself very well, because that's how I talk, you know. The respect, morals. You met these no, I never met. Her. Didn't know nothing about. Her. You know, only thing I know, her mother said they went to school with her, and she's gonna tell them. You know, told me, well, you don't know them. So, I said, do you know? She said, I know of them, but I'm seeing in the interview. You know, uh, you told your lawyer Sue Robinson that you just know one of them. That was Khalil Cook. So that tells me right there. We both was in the blind, as a mother and a father. We both in the blind. We both didn't even know these folks, you know. So. Can we start last week, or about more than a week ago? I'm sure you got the, it heard the information, got the information that there would be no prosecution by the United States Attorney's Office. 45 years of God's Word, truth, wisdom. If God is not in absolute control of all day. Well, yeah, but the case is, the case is still open, though. Um, so, God is still moving. My faith is so strong in the mustard seed that um, he will prevail, you know. And what does that look like to you? Patient, like I've always been. Just like y'all standing out here, I was patient while y'all set up. 
and everything. I always been patient. What I mean, what does that look like as far as you said you're still hopeful for what? Justice will be served. Justice will be served. It's gonna be served. It's gonna be served. And so what does that justice look like? This is going to look like they're going to get what they deserve to get to them. You just don't take a life. They brutally beat her. She didn't agree to fight. What's so else? She didn't agree. That's, that's, that's not her. You know, she did not agree to fight. You know, she was going over there in Georgia, somebody's uh, birthday, one of the she graduated with. That's what she thought she was going to do and then enjoy it take photos, and, you know, put them on her phone, and come back and enjoy it, and, you know, talk about it to her other friends, you know. Then the main thing, you know, she got the little kids, the little girls and boys that she plait hair, braid their hair. Now they wonder where Shankola is. Because Shankola didn't get adapted to her customers, her clients, you know, the mothers, the fathers, how well She's doing their daughters and son braiding their hair, and they proud of St. Cola doing their hair. And how they, you know, she got them looking, you know, stealing something in them that they can become this, they can become that. They might want the little girls might want to follow her footsteps. But right now, that crush from them six. And then the mother and the parents, the mother and the father's old parents are those six individuals. Don't have no decency to call up, interview one of you all on the news and say, Mr. You know, Mr. Robinson, the Robinson family, we saw about the loss of your daughter. Whatsoever. Their life is still moving along, you know, walking around here like they enjoy life. But this father right here struggling each and every day. You know, I cry. Every day. It's a struggle for me. Struggle. Have you had any contact with those six or their families? No, not at whatsoever. Have you attempted to, wanted to reach out, wanted to live? Now, you don't need me reaching out. You know, I'll let God do what he got to do. But I tell you this, they wouldn't, they're not going to get away. They, they're not going to get away. What is your message to them that they are watching? My message to them, you know, why can't y'all just go ahead and, and tell the truth? Why y'all up and left her like that? Because if you would have stayed, this father right here, would have made sure y'all got back to the United States whatsoever. Any of her friends that she grew up with, they would tell you that her dad took care of them when they was with Shankola just like they was mine from day one. And I'm still the same father that she was, that I raised her, that I am here today, and she gone, you know. Mr. Robinson, there is a discrepancy throughout the world, I guess, discrepancy is the best word between Mexican authorities saying, you know, we have, this was what they call femicide, and they have a, a warrant for one of the people that was on their trip with Shinquilla. However, the United States attorney is disputing the autopsy that they did on Shinquilla. Does that, any of that, does that concern you? It, it, I'm frustrated about it. To the, to the utmost, I'm frustrated. I just can't understand why, you know, the autopsy that I got back saying that her neck and spinal cord was broke because when I talked to the young lady, Miss Elizabeth, who over there, she, uh, I asked her before she even sent her body back to me, you know. Um, I asked her, I said, Miss Elizabeth, what, you know, how my daughter die? She said, Mr. Robinson, your daughter's neck and spinal cord was broke. I said, you kidding. I just stopped crying. Because they're saying that the, the, the Mecklenburg County exam, the medical examiner is saying that they didn't even make visual confirmation of that. Well, I can't understand that. I don't know who the medical examiner who auto, who did autopsy on her body, but I would like to know how many years of experience that he had in doing an autopsy on a body or, you know, where did, where, 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 where did he get his degree from? Because obviously it's frustrating. Yeah, very frustrating. Very frustrating. Because this lady Elizabeth, that's what she do. When people die over in Mexico, she go and get she get the body, um, do the paperwork and everything. 
And when's the last time you had communication like that? How often is the communication with the authorities down in Mexico? Not so often. You know, she'll send me a text message, you know, how I'm doing and everything, but the case, everybody still is pulling for Shankwell of Justice down here in Mexico, Cabo. I mean, you know, the Contier is saying that Shankwell didn't fit well in. Um, my main object is this, if nothing didn't happen, why they just up and left? You came that Friday, you supposed to stay about a couple of days, but you're going to just up and leave that next day? and get back on the plane and come back over here like it wasn't nothing, you're going to just leave her over there? That don't, even, that don't even sound right. Friends just don't do that. Friends don't do that. Is the plan still a rally in D.C. in May? I, I, well, I'm hearing from the information that I get from the news and, and people texting me. So uh, they keep me out of it. Can so I, they don't tell me, you know. Can I get you to talk? You mentioned the GoFundMe page a little bit earlier when you first started out talking. Yes. Do you want to, you, it sounded like you don't really have, you, you said you don't want to be involved with the GoFundMe page. I never, I never did want to be involved in the GoFundMe from day one, because there wasn't nobody arrested. I just want justice. Now, the GoFundMe page, it's, you know, it's sitting there. I mean, I guess they use it for the best ability of my daughter Case, our daughter Case, but still at the same time, this father right here, I'm going to let God do, do the work, because it's, it's going to get done. God said, you trust in him. He ain't going to fail you. He ain't going to forsake you. And so that's how I'm going to stand, y'all. I'm going to continue to stand. I'm going to continue to stand on my faith. I'm going to continue to stand on my faith from day one since she left me. You know. It's a sad situation, guys. Because Mr. Bernard Robinson says that that's his only child. And he says, he has said, that he'll never be able to walk her down the aisle and he'll never have grandchildren and that's that hurts i know it does and i know it wasn't easy for him to stand at that cemetery and apply that watch them apply that grave marker and then have to walk up onto the news media and complete an interview but we find the strength to do these things for our children and I'm very proud of him. He's a real, real father. He's a real man. And I also am very proud of him because he said that he really wasn't interested in the GoFundMe page. That he didn't care. That he knew that God was going to fight this battle for him. And with faith like that, you cannot go wrong. And he also says that he knows that God is going to handle it. And that God is going to bring her justice. And he's right. And we're going to just keep him and the rest of the family in prayer, guys. We're going to keep them in prayer. And we YouTubers are going to continue to lift her up. Because in the words of Sue Ann Robinson, we are disappointed. But we are not deterred. And just as Mr. Robinson just said, the case is not closed, so it's not over yet, and they are going to just have to maybe go back to the drawing board and start all over again. There's even talk about her being exhumed and another autopsy being performed, but whatever happens and however it happens, we will be here to be support to the family and to keep her lifted up because we want justice for Shan Quilla Robinson, and it's coming. So there's no need for people to start getting, the Cabo Six to start getting comfortable and thinking that it's over because it's not over. And I don't think that that father is going to rest until something is done. And I don't think that her mother or her sister or her community is going to rest until something is done. I know that I don't plan on resting until something is done. And my fellow YouTubers out there, we're not going to rest. Thank you guys for coming. Justice for Shanquilla. Now guys, my current subscribers, thank you so much for being there for me. I've been getting a lot of good comments from you guys. I love it. Keep them coming. And if you are new to the channel, please subscribe. 
I'm trying to get to my 2,000 subscribers. Now, I don't have 150,000 like some of them do. I'm trying to get to 2,000. I'm struggling. I actually um, started doing this with Shanquilla. I had planned to do just one story. And it turned out that every time they did an update, it touched me so much emotionally that I did that story and the next story. And it's just been going on ever since. So hit that subscribe button for me, guys, and tap on that notification bell if you want the updates immediately. Hit the like button. It pushes it up in the rank and allows for more visitors. All right. And also, leave me a comment in the comment section. Much love to you guys. Smooches.